For 60 years, Nebraska and Colorado have met as bitter rivals in the American heartland. A matchup built with last second thrills. Brown for the win. The kick is up. Monumental upsets. Touchdown! Six! Six touchdowns for Brown! After today, these two proud programs will separate for the first time since 1948. All that remains of this historic showdown is the final Big 12 game at Memorial Stadium. Led by a pounding running game and a ferocious defense, the Cornhuskers look to clinch the North Division title. While the Buffaloes are looking to play spoiler, fighting for the last lap and a chance to derail the Big Red season. It's Colorado and Nebraska, Big 12 rivals, one final time. This is ESPN College Football, presented by K Jewelers. Today, as part of the Dr. Pepper Rivalry Series, it is the final Big 12 Conference game between Colorado and Nebraska. Here are the standings in the Big 12 Conference. Nebraska, all they need is a victory here today, and they head for the Big 12 Championship a week from tomorrow. And how about Colorado? If they win, they will become bowl eligible with their sixth win. And don't forget, tomorrow, down in Stillwater, Oklahoma, it is Bedlam. Oklahoma State and Oklahoma, they battle for the South. Hi, everybody. Ron Franklin along with Ed Cunningham. We hope you have had a great Thanksgiving Day. Uh, injuries is the subject here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, the starting quarterback, both legs are injured. I don't think we're going to see Taylor Martinez in this ballgame, which means Cody Green, the number three quarterback, will get the start. And on Tuesday, hard to explain, but Niles Paul, the leading receiver for the team, went down. He was not hit on the play, and he broke his foot. What are they going to do with all these injuries? How are they going to replace him? Well, you know, Sean Watson, the offensive coordinator, may, ha may have had the understatement of the week when he said, yeah, it's going to be a challenge. But they've been challenged since Taylor Martinez was hurt against Missouri. Luckily for Nebraska, they have two very fine running backs. Roy Hellu Jr., who is a senior playing his last game at home, and Rex Burkhead two years in a row for Hellu, over 1,000 yards rushing. And for Burkhead against Iowa State, he lined up a lot in the shotgun formation when Martinez was hurt, so expect to see that. But with the defense that Nebraska plays, I think the best secondary in the country, you're going to be okay. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. Brian Cabral is the interim head coach for the Buffaloes. He has won two ball games. They have played really well for him. And the person you got to be proudest of is quarterback Cody Hawkins. Think of the last few weeks for Cody Hawkins, what he's been through. His father was fired, had to answer questions about whether he was going to quit the team, which he scoffed at and said, are you kidding me? I play for Colorado, not for my father. He's played his best ball the last two weeks. And here come the Cornhuskers on Senior Day in Lincoln. When we come back, we'll have an interview with head coach Bo Pelini, Colorado, Nebraska, coming up next. for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. And Bo Pelini, there's a conference title on the line today. This is an emotional rivalry with the Buffaloes, and it's senior day. What have you done to ensure your team's focus is in the right place this week? Just talk to them about what we always do. It's about the process. It's about it's the next game, and we just play our style of football, play within ourselves, and, and uh, we'll be just fine. Now your quarterback, Taylor Martinez, is banged up yet again, and this week your leading receiver, Niles Paul, broke his foot, so he's out. What changes for you guys offensively? Nothing. It's just you plug some other guys in. It gives some other guys an opportunity to step up, and I think you'll see that today. Nothing changes without Martinez' explosiveness? No, no. I mean, it's, uh, you know, Cody's very capable, and he's going to play a good football game today. Have a good game today, Bo. Thank you. Ron? Jadeen Edwards, thanks so much. Well, the, the wonderful thing for Coach Pelini and this Nebraska football team, they do have not only have depth, they have quality depth. Well, and Zach Lee, you mentioned, uh, you know, third string quarterback, Cody Green, Zach Lee, all of these injuries, all the off the field stuff last week at Texas A&M. But uh, 
Zach Lee also battling some injuries with his hand and his elbow. And Taylor Martinez, it was an ankle that was injured. It was re-stepped on last week in St. M, but it's a turf toe turf on toe his left really foot. Holding that's him up. really yeah. he's been battling. He was really gimpy the other day in practice. It'll be interesting to see if he's healthy if they are to win and go to the Big 12 championship game. Eric Goodman prepares to kick it off for the Buffaloes. They won the toss and deferred. So we're going to see Nebraska on offense first. And from the 10, it's Brandon Kenny. Kenny gets by one tacker. He'll take it out to the 26-yard line. And let's talk a little bit about Cody Green, a sophomore out of Dayton, Texas. Making his second start of the season. The first one uh, was against Iowa State when Martinez was injured and Zach Lee was hurt. Uh, of course, last year as a true freshman, started two ball games when Nebraska was looking for some type of running game. He is an efficient runner, not as explosive, of course, as Martinez, but he sees the field and play. It, it, it manages the game very well. Running play on first down and probably the first of about 50 running plays today because with a young quarterback and the two quality running backs that Nebraska has, I'm sure if they can get away with that, that's exactly what they'll do. And you're going to see a lot of zone read plays. Cody Green is good at that. He's got a capable arm. Uh, there is some win, and it looks like uh, they have lost to Ben Cotton, a tight end to an injury early. Buckmeyer into the ball game at wide receiver number nine is not a regular participant but he's in the ball game you saw him working out quite a bit on uh, tuesday brandon kenny on the receiving end the impact players for this one Ed. well a guy who has burst on the scene lately is kyler reed great vertical speed averages nearly 24 yards per reception can really stretch the field and defensively josh hardigan a defensive end undersized guy at about 225 pounds had an injury in the middle of the season with a high ankle sprain finally healthy three huge sacks last week against kansas state one that sealed the victory it is third down they need to take it to the 35 yard line Burkhead in the backfield. He will take the snap, but he'll take it straight ahead in the Wildcat formation. And this is one of the things that Ed was talking about. It worked well last week, and I think you can see it a lot today, and why not? Well, he's a guy who, uh, he can do the zone read, he can handle the ball. The question starts to become, they ran that uh, about 18 times against Iowa State when Martinez was hurt. Will they throw the ball out of that formation? If I'm Colorado, you've got to think at some point they're going to let Burkhead test out that right arm. Well, he does everything else well. And in fact, he's going to line up in the Wildcat again. And he runs a lead play. Rode the tailback coming around to Helu and did not hand it to him. He kept it himself. Uh, how about the game plan, Ed? Well, for Colorado, Rodney Stewart, they call him Speedy. He's uh, number three in the country in number of carries per game. Right into some play action to challenge a very good secondary. And for Nebraska, my math is not terrible. Number 10, Roy Hello Jr., 22, Burkhead. Give them about 50 touches. And early on, it looks like it might be 60 before this is over. Going to be Burkhead again. And you see him in the short drop, about four and a half yards behind. Makes it. This is a Cody Green, I beg your pardon, throwing the pass to Burkhead and incomplete. Now they're saying the ball came loose. And down the sideline is Colorado and being spotted out of bounds at the 28-yard line is Jimmy Smith. Well, they are saying that Burkhead caught the pass. I'm not sure he ever had control of that. I'm sure we're going to take a couple more looks and this will be reviewed. No, that's not a catch. As he went to tuck it away, the ball fell out. Uh, I think this will be overturned and the ball go back to Nebraska. I can see why they initially thought that. It looked like he had it, but when he went to tuck it, ball fell out. That's not a catch. After further review, the receiver did not complete the catch. It is an incomplete pass. It'll be third down. Please reset the clock to 12.30. Rick Lumier, the 
referee in today's ball game. You can hear that they changed the call that was made on the field. So for Nebraska, it'll be a third down. They need to take it to the 45-yard line of Colorado. Deep drop by Green. Throws the ball complete, but it is... Well, he caught the ball about three yards short. It's Brockmeyer who uh, made the reception. Brockmeyer, a guy in there because of the injury you mentioned to Niles Paul. That is the first catch of his career from the state of Nebraska on senior day. He's a senior, so kind of a big deal for he and his family, I would suspect. Henry stands back to punt. Here's the boot. Not a real good one, but I'll tell you, from where he was kicking from, he's getting a decent roll, and it's going to be touched dead at the 16-yard line. Let's go down to the sideline and visit with Jadine Edwards. Well, Ron, I mentioned at the top of the show that it's been an eventful week for the Huskers. During their game last Saturday with Texas A&M, they were flagged for a school record 16 penalties. Now, head coach Bo Pelini was incensed at the officiating. It was caught on camera several times. He also was seen going off on his quarterback, Taylor Martinez. Defensive coordinator Carl Pelini also had a run-in after the game with a, with a photographer. And I'll get back to this after the play. Hawkins gets the snap. They go straight ahead with Stewart. He's not going to have anything. Janine, back to you. So, Ron, on Sunday, University Chancellor Harvey Perlman issued a public statement saying he was disappointed with his head coach's behavior. There were also rumors swirling that quarterback Taylor Martinez had quit the team after being berated by Pelini on the sideline. On Monday, Bo Pelini apologized. Tuesday, Carl Pelini apologized. Athletic Director Tom Osborne also issued a statement applauding Pelini for his stewardship of the football program, but saying he hoped he didn't see behavior like that again. Okay, Janine, it has indeed been a busy week. Apologies have been issued and accepted. Running play straight ahead with Stewart, and he's going to be close to the first down. I think he's going to miss it by about a half yard. Courtney Osborne defensively for the Huskers to make the tackle. And I, I think one of the things when you take away from this, and, and Bo Pelini admitted that he went over the line last week, is if that's all you saw and you weren't around Carl and Bo Pelini and how hard they work and how much they care about their kids, you wouldn't know what they've done. This program was in disarray when they got here, and all they're trying to do is play for their second Big 12 championship in a row and have good kids, too. Straight ahead with the handoff, and yes, he will have the first down at the 27-yard line. Again, it is Stewart. Well, Cody Hawkins had talked about him off the top of the telecast, and it's been a difficult time. I mean, his uh, his dad is is fired as the head coach, and he not only has pressed on, but he uh, he was incensed when some people asked him, "Does this mean you quit the team?" And it, of course not. He said, "I signed with the Buffaloes. I didn't sign with Coach Hawkins." And he has done more than Yeoman's work the last couple of games, particularly. But Garrett Stewart. You have to wonder. Stewart is tackled by Levante David who averages, what, 11 total tackles a ball game. You have to wonder about the size of Stewart at 175 pounds and only 5'6", of how much of a pounding he can endure because this very quick Nebraska defense is all over you, and more than one normally hits Yeah, him. and Eric Kiesel, the offensive coordinator, when we were talking to him this week, he said sometimes we wonder, but he never seems to slow down and get stronger as the game goes on, so we'll keep feeding him. Hawkins, first throw. That ball is tipped. Tipped at the line of scrimmage. It's going to be third down and ten as we take a look at the impact players. Well, for Colorado, the all-time leading receiver, Scotty McKnight, playing his last regular season game. Good body control, has a great understanding of coverages. We'll need that against Nebraska. And for Nebraska, a guy who doesn't get as much pub as Prince of Makamura, and uh, Alfonso Dennard, but uh, in my opinion, the MVP of this defense, Eric Haig, he plays what they call the peso linebacker. It's a hybrid safety linebacker, never comes off the field. Here comes a blitz off the corner. Quick pass in the flat. Cody had to hurry that one. Amukamara is the man who was coming on the blitz off the left side, creating the problems, and Hawkins simply did not have time to get set and get a good pass off. First punt of the afternoon. 
for the Colorado Buffaloes. Grossnickel is the man who will punt it away, and you can see that Nebraska has decided to put two deep men back. Very high and caught with a fair catch at the 34. That's Burkhead. Let's take a break. No score. the ball to around the 40. John Saunders, we understand you have another update on Alabama and Auburn. Well, Ron, they continue to move the ball at will. Watch Greg McElroy go 42 yards to Julio Jones' favorite target again. This is after they almost scored another touchdown by Mark Ingram on this Taco Bell update. They get a field goal out of this and lead 24-0. Okay, John, thanks so much. Wow. Talk about being prepared. Burkhead lines up in that wildcat formation again, which means he will receive the snap, and he keeps it right up the middle. Has five, has ten, spinning and turning. Had it off at about 15 yards on the carry. And uh, if you're just joining us and wondering why Burkhead is carrying the ball so much from that shotgun formation, it's because Taylor Martinez is out with a right ankle injury and a left foot injury. He has a turf toe, and uh, I believe that's the fourth time that we've seen Burkhead lined up in that formation, and with that type of uh, success, I would assume probably going to see it a few more times. Now, we both talked just a moment ago about the fact that the turf toe is the thing that's giving him the most pain and, and uh, uh, you know dissatisfaction as that pass completed and the tackle made immediately by Kenny. But I was going to say, let's go back and show you how he got hurt uh, against Texas A&M. I mean, it is Caputo, the center, who was blocking. He wanted he steps right on his ankle. Watch it right there. And uh, tweaked the ankle that had been injured against Missouri. And uh, then he also suffered a turf toe. Came back and played in the second half, but was just not himself. And this offense, without Martinez, has really struggled the last three and a half ball games since he was injured against Missouri in that first half here. Cody Green keeps the ball. Well, that gives you an indication right there. Yes, he can carry the football and do it effectively. Uh, he may not be uh, Taylor Martinez, but uh, he acquitted himself very nicely right there. Yeah, and, and this is, remember, you go back to last year when Nebraska was really struggling offensively, a lot of it having to do with an offensive line that had a bunch of guys injured, new lineups every single week. But Cody Green, as a freshman, came in and started a couple of ball games ahead of Zach Lee because he can run. Cody Green under center this time. Gives it to Burkhead. You see the immediate cut at the line of scrimmage. He was within one tackle of breaking that for a touchdown. And he takes it all the way to the 25 and a half. It's a gain of 13. What a really nice job by Ben Cotton. Watches the defender comes inside, and Cotton does a really good job of getting the block down inside, washes him outside, and then you have the pulling guard, Ricky Henry, coming from the right side. But a really good job by Ben Cotton at the point of attack. Kyler Reed as well. You saw 25 in there blocking. First down for the Huskers. They own the ball at the Colorado 24. Fumbled by Green. Did he get back on it? It looks as though that maybe he did. It's Mike Caputo, the center. Yeah, never got up. The ball slipped out of his hand. You could see Caputo turn around right away as a former center. I know that feeling. Sometimes the ball just gets stuck in that turf, and you go to pull it up, and it comes out of your hand. So. That ball never even got close to Green, and luckily for Nebraska, it didn't get kicked towards Colorado. And I think Caputo helped keep that. He's like he walled off anybody coming in who might kick. <laughs> what do you think his heart rate did when he knew that ball didn't get up? <laughs> this is the sweep, and this is Marlowe. Tim Marlowe is uh, the man who is the ball carrier. 
Saturday Night Football on ABC has a battle between Big 12 rivals Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. The winner of that game is going to be in the driver's seat for a spot in the Big 12 Championship. Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines on ABC at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. And of course, uh, if Oklahoma wins, it ends up in a three-way tie between Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, and Texas A&M, and likely Oklahoma would go because they would be the highest rated BCS, and A&M wouldn't get within one spot of the BCS, which would then kick in the head-to-head. The deep man, Gillian, and it looked as though he, well, as he was heading out of bounds. Here you go, take a look at it right there. Not really sure that he had. Yeah, no, he never had it. Yeah. Terrell Smith, a true freshman in there playing because of all of the injuries. Five defensive backs have been hurt for Colorado, but uh, Smith did a good job not quitting on that ball and pulling it away, not letting Gillian secure it for the touchdown. 42-yard attempt, kick is up, and he's got it. 16 of 17 on the year, and the Huskers go on top as Henry gets the field goal. Coming up, 1989 Nebraska Colorado Classic. That when we return. Let's take a look back 1989 at a historical moment. J.J. Flanagan scored twice, and a last-second Hail Mary was incomplete as number two, Colorado, defeated number three, Nebraska, 27-21. to 21. Of course, the next year, Colorado ended up winning their only national championship in 1990, but that was the beginning. I played against that 1989 Colorado team, one of the best college football teams I've ever seen. They were stacked. He has 118 touchbacks, but he's kicking into the wind and a high spinner. Wind caught that one, and it's Arthur Jaffe who makes the return. John Saunders in uh, New York has Auburn finally awakened. Yes, Ron, they have indeed. A nice little fake there by Cam Newton, and he tosses this one 36 yards to Emory Blake, and Auburn's on the board trailing 24-7. Thanks, John. Our situation here in Lincoln on Senior Day. We have five minutes and nine seconds left to play opening quarter. And the Huskers have just gotten on the scoreboard with a field goal. Running play right up the middle to Stewart. Gomes is the man who came in to make the tackle. And let's give him a gain of almost five yards in the play. And, and you start to see Rodney Stewart in his size, 5'6", 175 pounds, and Brian Cabral, the interim head coach, took over for Dan Hawkins after the debacle against Kansas. But uh, they have really started to rely on him and an offensive line that is playing as well as any offensive line has played in Colorado in several years. Led by a big left tackle who is just that. He's huge. Ball was caught and immediately to a knee with Stewart. So they got to lose three yards on this play. And Nate Solder, the left tackle, this week was named as one of the Outland Trophy finalists with uh, tackle Gabe Karimi from Wisconsin and Florida State guard Rodney Hudson, guy who's projected to be a top 20 pick. And, you know, Dan Hawkins is here, of course, supporting his son. And I asked him about Solder, and he said he's one of those rare guys at six feet nine that has the ability to get down and play at a very low pad level thinks he's going to have a nice NFL career. Folks, he already has his degree. His degree is in biology. And his uh, GPA was 3.5. Great protection. Going to go long. Has a man out there. You can see three red jerseys around Tony Clements. Tony also is used on punt returns sometimes. And he's a speedster. But a good job by the Huskers. Second time that the Buffaloes will have punted in this ball game, and they're kicking with the wind. And they just missed Clemens. He had a step, uh, but uh, Hawkins overthrew him just a touch. I'm not sure if maybe the wind didn't push that ball a little bit. 
Yeah, a little hard in both directions yeah. trying to read. How much do I overthrow it go in the other direction? And how much do I underthrow in this direction? And here's the rugby style kick. Caught at the 22 yard line or make it the 27. Crowd wanted a flag. And now for a review of this great rivalry presented by Dr. Pepper. See, Nebraska leads the series 48 18. 25 and 8 here in Lincoln. You see the national titles Nebraska 5, Colorado 1. I know this next one jumps out at you, Ed. <laughs> Big A to Big 12 titles. Nebraska 43 of them. And uh, the crowd still going crazy, of course. A lot of these fans think that they were jobbed. Yeah, last week against Texas A&M with 16 penalties, the the big one, the pass uh, roughing the passer against Courtney Osborne that kept the drive going for him. Green, out there. That's to McNeil, Mike McNeil, the senior out of Kirkwood, Missouri. 18 yards in the pass play. And McNeil, a guy who. Uh, Set the Nebraska record back in 2008 for tight ends with 32 catches. Switch to slot receiver, and a lot of it has to do because Ben Cotton and Kyler Reed are so good, they wanted the ability to have those three guys on the field at the same time. This time, Nebraska with a two tight end alignment on first down. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 78 of the offense, five yard penalty, remains first down. Marcel Jones, number 78, a junior out of Phoenix. And uh, they will boo every single penalty, even if it's right after last week. But <laughs> you see Bo Pelini on the sideline. He said he's going to watch his temperament, and uh, he looks like the uh, model of calmness over there right now. I saw him this morning before he went for his morning jog of about six yards. Six yards, six uh, miles. Burkhead caught and slung down. And now here comes the flag. Ray Polk is the man who made the tackle. Personal foul, face mask, number 26 in the defense. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. You know, going back to last week and, and all of that video that showed uh, Bo and Carl Pellini getting so upset. And, you know, it, it, until you get to know these guys and you're around them as much as we've been over the last few years, these are really good guys, really good coaches. Yes, they went a little too far last week, but it shouldn't diminish exactly like Tom Osborne, the athletic director, and of course the uh, great coach from here. Uh, has said let's not tarnish what these guys have done they're, they're young men go to class they do well in the classroom you don't read about them getting in trouble off the field and uh, what they do on the field of course speaks for itself a chance to play for the Big 12 championship two years in a row when they took over a program that was listless when they got here three years ago okay. spinning continuing to work being pushed by his teammates and that might be a first down Ray Polk will make the tackle and we had Nebraska early a couple of times I think that maybe Burkhead had some some little injuries that were not quite well he's running harder and better than we saw him early yeah you know and in, in, in the game we saw against Missouri of course Roy Hello Jr. goes for 300 yards and we were talking to Sean Watson he said they're so similar they both run well between the tackles they both have good speed we'll go with the guy who has a lather and I also wonder if Hello Jr.'s calf is still not bruised from last week well, Burkhead gets the snap and he's going to take it for maybe two yards Burkhead, by the way, had already four carries of 10 yards or better. Yeah, Halu, Roy Halu could not go in the second half last week against uh, AM. He got his calf stepped on. He looked fine in practice, but uh, Burkhead is the guy that they want to use in that shotgun Wildcat formation. But the Halu, a senior, quietly had an as having an amazing career. Top five rusher in the top five in this great program and done it very quietly. This is Burkhead again. Burkhead also was the type of kid, just like Helou, that absolutely 
loves to carry the ball at least 25 times. Just get really lathered up and and just keep going and get better as the afternoon goes on. BD is the man who made the tackle. BJ, a senior out of Hawaii. In this Colorado defense. Of course, Brian Cabral was the linebackers coach before he took over as the interim head coach, but uh, Ron Collins, the defensive coordinator. They've been battling a ton of injuries, especially in their secondary all season. Green throws it complete. Boy, that was a bullet. He's going to have the first down. <laughs> it's Brockmeyer again. His second career catch. How yeah. about it? Yeah, amazing. This guy came to Nebraska as a baseball player. He was a pitcher, had an arm injury. He uh, came to the football team as a quarterback last year, walked on. And then he switched to wide receiver when they were preparing for the Holiday Bowl. And when we were at practice on Wednesday, I kept looking down going, who's number nine? And we talked to the coach and said he's worked his way into the role. And, of course, with Niles Paul, unfortunately, out for, uh, for this game with a broken foot, stepped up and done a nice job. Well, you could tell it is a popular situation with him doing well on the sideline. Take a timeout. Huskers 3 to nothing and threatening. And our thanks to the ladies and one guy of the uh, Colorado uh, cheering staff. Uh, right now, it, it, Burkhead to me is is really a difference maker. And hey, Lou, I'm not sure he's still quite a hundred percent. Well, and somebody and, stepping up. Yeah, and I would think that this is Burkhead time. Remember, Cody Green threw an interception last week in this territory against A&M. So I think they'll play it pretty conservative. This is Burkhead. Big opening. Tried to juke by that last defender, was unable to do so, but he's going to be tackled at the 15. Well, he, he Burkhead is a powerful guy, 5'11", 210 pounds, and uh, good moves in the open field. Not a lot of wasted movement. No. Constantly getting yardage. it off and this is Burkhead again headed for the five the three and maybe down to the two yard line it will be first and goal for the Cornhuskers Carol Smith making the tackle you hear a lot of people talk about patience for a running back watch when Burkhead gets caught up behind a block he's waiting for his two pulling guards and just does a wonderful job of cutting behind Keith Williams there but you just have to wait, wait, wait. It, it feels unnatural for a lot of backs, but some guys like Burkhead just have the ability to do it. That was a wonderful one. When you learn patience as a running back, that is when you, uh, that's when you step forward. It becomes a lot easier. Legate in the ball game as the fullback. He blocks to the right, the running play goes straight ahead, and it's Burkhead with the touchdown. Burkhead, a truly interesting story out of Plano East. That, of course, is a suburb of Dallas. Ed, take us through the touchdown. Here. Well, this all starts with the center, Mike Caputo. He's back blocking on pre-check the defensive tackle so that the guard could pull. That play is supposed to go a couple of holes to the right because Caputo makes such a nice block. Burkhead cuts behind it for the touchdown. Well. I actually said, as you heard me, Legate, you know, headed to the right, to the yes. hole you were talking about. As he gets the extra point to go. 10 to nothing, Nebraska on top. And when we come back, another classic. This one, 1991. Well, 1991, and I remember this one well. I was doing the ball game. Bowl chilling temperatures watch the fans throwing snowballs and oranges onto the field as Brian Bennett's game winning field goal is attempted and it is blocked Colorado Nebraska finished in a 19 19 tie and of course those oranges being thrown because of the tie in With to the, the Orange Bowl yeah, exactly and uh, Nebraska ended up going to the Orange Bowl that year and that was the beginnings 
the young guys on that team for Nebraska formed what I considered maybe the best two-year run, 94 95 in the history of college football. The Alex kick. There is touchback number 119. And let's go back to John Saunders in New York. John, what do you got for us, partner? Well, Ron, we've got our AT&T All-America Player of the Week update. And let's go to today's West Virginia quarterback, Geno Smith, against Pitt. 9 of 12, 212 yards, and three touchdowns. Text vote to 345, 345 from your mobile phone to vote and for a chance to win a trip to the national championship game. Thanks, John. Our situation. Huskers are on the board. 10 to nothing. They lead it. We have 13.47 to play in this opening half. Will Jefferson in the ball game at tailback. Pass over the middle is caught with the 22. Ball is loose, and now they're saying that was an incomplete pass. Let's take a look now at our Pacific Life game summary stats. Well, and you take a look at these stats and you start to think Colorado's got to get some kind of drive going. They're down guys on defense, have been for the last half of the season. Almost 11 minutes of possession. It's been the Rex Burkhead show. But you've got to think Cody Hawkins and, and his group on offense need to get something going or the defense is going to be worn out before halftime. And Cody right now is 0 of 4. Stewart just not much doing. Levante David. And David well, let's transfer out of Miami. Yeah, what, what a what a wonderful story Levante David has been. Of course, they had a couple of injuries at linebacker during camp. Sean Fisher injured an ankle out for the season. He was a starter last year. Will Compton, who's back, broke his foot. But David, uh, I think he's got to be the Big 12 defensive newcomer of the year. Leads the conference with almost 11 tackles per game. Third down, line to make is the 30. Nebraska showing blitz, and here they come up the middle. Pass is incomplete, and now the flag comes in. And I think Clemens is going to be interfered with by Dennard. Alfonso Dennard is the man who had the cover. Well, watching it live, it looked to me like this call could go either way because I saw it Clemens might. extend his hands. Holding number 15 in the defense. 15-yard mm. penalty from the tech correction. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. There was a lot of hand fighting going on, and as I tracked it down, it looked like Clemens may have extended. Good coverage by Dennard. Second first down of the afternoon by the Buffaloes. Rod Stewart comes to the left side. And let's check down on the sideline with uh, Janine, who is with Niles Paul. That's right, Ron. And you guys mentioned that the Huskers were without their leading receiver today. Niles, as a senior on senior day, what is this like for you to be standing here on the sideline and not able to be out there on the field? Uh, very emotional for me because I, I, I would give anything just to be out there with my, with my family, my team, and playing my final game in uh, Memorial Stadium. Now you have been speaking this week with Joe Brockmeyer, who we've seen make the first two catches of his career. He's playing well. What did you tell him this week about playing the position for you? I mean, I, even in practice, Joe makes big plays. So I just told him to trust his ability and go out there and, and, and play his game. He's, 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 he's doing it out there, and, and he's making me proud. What, do you, what else are you seeing from the offense right now? Uh, they, they're playing real aggressive, real physical, our style of ball. So I, I think if we keep it up, it should be an interesting game. Is there any chance that you will be able to play again this season? I know you've got a stress fracture in your foot. Any chance you could make it back out there? They said uh, I can possibly be back for the bowl game, if I, uh, but I'm going to do everything in my power to get back. Oh, well, we wish you good luck, Niles, and thanks Thank for talking with us. Thank you. Ron? Niles Paul, a senior here on Senior Day, and uh, that is a difficult thing for him. And this is Mike Iltis, the starting center, who also can play guard for this offensive line, who's being helped off the field. And uh, it looks as though he is favoring his, his left leg. Meanwhile, Meredith is being taken off the other side. And Cameron, only a sophomore out of Santa Ana, California, he has contributed mm -hmm. mightily, just as Mike Iltis has to his side of the ball for Colorado. Yeah, Meredith, a guy who... Uh had to play up on two feet when they played Missouri. They unveiled a three down lineman and had Meredith roaming around, blitzing from different angles, played very well in that game. But uh, the injury is starting to stack up for both of these teams. 
Yeah. What kind of difference does it make in the fact that Mike Yotzis also makes the calls? I know you have other people who can do it, but it's not the same thing, is it? No, it's not. And, and the big thing you want to watch here is can Keenan Stevens get the snap up? That's number one. And he had minor knee surgery just two weeks ago. Here's a throwback, and he throws again. Wide open at the 48-yard line is uh, Luke Walters. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't draw it up much better in the parking lot, I'll tell you. What what it, and I'll tell you what, but it worked like a charm, didn't it? Well, they had five yards. They had uh, Rodney Stewart through his first pass since Little League last week against Kansas State. That time a double pass back to Cody Hawkins. And give credit to Eric Keesaw. They needed something to get going offensively, so he calls a trick play, and it works. Deepest penetration of the afternoon by the Buffaloes. With the 38. Stewart, big opening up the middle, has five, has ten, and he's off inside the 15 yard line and all the way to the 14 as Levante David saved a touchdown. That's a gain of 24 yards. Well, remember, Cameron Meredith is out. Here's the cutback lane right back here. And just good blocking. Yeah, the, 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 the linebacker had over pursued that. I think that may have been a misalignment for Nebraska. Good vision by Rodney Stewart though to cut back. 24 yards on the running play. It is first down Buffaloes at the 14 yard line. They trail 10 to nothing. Walters in motion. Hawkins. Great protection goes for the end zone and the ball is incomplete. Nice job defensively. Haig is the man who was there working against Devon Thornton. A redshirt freshman out of Denver. And this is a throw that uh, Hawkins would want back because Devon Thornton spun Haig around. The ball was a little late and then thrown back to the inside. If that ball would have been thrown to the outside, Thornton had to run a really good route on Haig. They just missed it. Second down. Stewart, the lone setback for the Bucks. He'll get it straight ahead. And he's going to take it almost all the way to the five yard line. Gomes out of the free safety position. David had a shot at him, but he couldn't hold on. Uh, you just don't expect a guy 5'6, 175 pounds to get as many carries as he does. But uh, averages almost 24 per game, third in the country. He's starting to get a little lather. And that was a wonderful move he put on David because David had him for about a two yard game and just made him whiff. 1,230 yards for him coming into the ball game. Eighth play of the drive for Colorado. Third down, they need the four. Stewart again, bounces it, spins, nowhere to go. Levante David is right there. And now decision time. It is fourth down. He maybe gained a half yard on the play, and that's it. And it looks as though the yep, special teams are going to come out. Eric Goodman, the field goal kicker, lines up. And if I were Nebraska, I'd be very concerned about a fake here. You've got a team that lost five games in a row. They've won two in a row to get themselves back into bowl contention. I, I would be very worried about a fake if I were Nebraska. And remember, Cody Hawkins is the holder. As you look at Goodman, 22-yard attempt from the right hash mark. Yeah, that silenced the crowd as he's good. 10 to 3, our new score. Huskers still on top. Dessert table did not have pumpkin and cheesecake. <laughs> pumpkin pie and cheesecake on the same plate, but they ended up there for you. I saw it. <laughs> well, I've taken up for our producer, Bob Goodrich. This is Marlowe on the return. Hang on. One man to beat. And a flag comes down. Marlowe took it all the way back out to the 45 yard line and I think it was Goodman the man who kicked off who got a hand on him. And it was thrown right where Goodman was making the Goodman tackle. The return holding number 32 of the receiving team. Penalty will be 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. It's Jim Ebke a safety on Let's special see. teams. He'll be on the uh, right side of the screen. And that is a takedown. The reason it was thrown where he was running is because uh, Epke basically made the tackle there. And of course, there's Taylor Martinez, who, if you're a Nebraska fan, you hope that treatment's taking hold because uh, Burkhead's played well, but uh, this guy makes a whole big difference. And if you're going to play Oklahoma or Oklahoma State, you'd want him healthy for next week if yeah. you win this ball game. Might as well, you know, you got things going well for you. Straight ahead. 
Big opening. This is Halu. If there's any question, is he healthy? Yes. I talked to the head coach this morning and asked him about, you mentioned that he had a bruise on, on his uh, calf of his left leg. Yeah. And Bo said it was more like he got clipped high on the calf, and he thought he was as close to 100% as he has been. Yeah, Janine Edwards uh, just uh, reporting up to us that he was on the sideline in the last uh, series, stretching that calf out. When you get that bruise sometimes in this cold weather, yeah. it'll start to lock up on you. after a pickup of five. Affleck. And now it's time for our Affleck trivia question, which is, what is the last decade that Nebraska failed to win a conference title? We'll come back and give you the answer here very, very shortly. And the reason the last decade that the Huskers failed to win a conference title. And the reason we ask is because uh, this is their last shot in this decade That's right. That's to win right. a conference championship, the last one coming in 1999. Wildcat formation again, it's Burkhead, fakes the run and then holds on to it. And that's a nice job defensively by Curtis Cunningham. Junior out of Littleton, Colorado, number 50. Holding on for dear life. Good looking Curtis right there. And this feels to me like maybe a, a vertical throw here. You've been pounding it, maybe a little play action. Third and manageable at four. I wouldn't be surprised if Sean Watson, the offensive coordinator, dials up a deep throw off the play action here. Third down. Need to take it to the 50-yard line. Colorado showing blitz off the left side, and they bring it. Good protection, though. Pass is thrown. It is complete to Reed. And Reed, as he fights forward, will pick up the first down. Connor Reed. The first time we saw him truly make a huge impression for this Husker football team was against Oklahoma State down in Stillwater. Well, it's a double drag. You see Kenny going right in front of Reed, and Reed does a wonderful job. Brown never lets go, but Reed knew exactly where the pylon was, fought for it. Nice effort. Jaleel Brown is the man who was leading the uh, defensive attack there. He wouldn't let go until friends came. Helou in the backfield. And a pitch to him on the sweep to the left side. Turns it up. Well, I'll tell you what. Terrell Smith did a nice job of saving a touchdown right there. Ben Cotton, you could see number 81 out with a really nice block. And it's a 13-yard game. Now, and at left guard Keith Williams also does a good job pulling. Another senior playing his last game. Kicks out the outside linebacker. Good cut by Halu. And I am so impressed every time I see Halu. There's just no weakness to his game. He can play low. He's got good speed, good vision, good acceleration. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. I think he's got a bright future. Burkhead. Hey, this is pretty good one-two punch with these two guys being healthy. Well, when the visitors arrived, they said that they came in peace. But they lied. ABC's V. They return on Tuesday, January the 4th, on ABC. Clock runs about to go under seven minutes to play. Good look at uh, Coach Cabral, the interim coach for the Colorado Buffaloes. And there's the direct snap again to Burkhead. And Burkhead off left guard as a flag comes down in the secondary. I don't think he got the first down. And one of the things that uh, Nebraska has been good at is, is explosive plays throughout the season. But they really hurt themselves, and you can see the anger of Bo Pelini. Personal foul blocking below the waist. Number six of the offense. The penalty would be 15 yards from the end of the run. Second down. To Marlowe. Yeah, and they call Marlowe a receiver because he was working back towards the middle of the field. And when a receiver starts working back towards the middle of the field, he cannot block the defender within 10 yards of the line of scrimmage. And Nebraska, unbelievable. Their average TD length, almost 35 yards. But when they get down in close, they tend to make their mistakes. They tend to get penalties and turn the ball over. And that's why you saw the anger on Coach Pelini's face. They've just harmed themselves inside the 30 all season long. 
Check it down. Ballou right up the middle. He's going to take it back to the original line of scrimmage, tripped up by Patrick Menke. Well, you know you're in Alex Henry territory already. I think arguably one of the best kickers in the history of college football. So here you are third and long. Remember that post pattern Kyler Reed likes to run. We saw it against Missouri, saw it against Oklahoma State. Feels like might be about that time. Nebraska four up six on third down conversions. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 58 of the offense. Five yard penalty remains third down. It's Mike Caputo, the center. Well, that's five penalties on the Huskers now for 45 yards. And they're becoming their own worst enemy. Had a really nice drive going. We're eating a lot of the clock. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, they're going backwards. Now, again, wind at your back. I think now you're thinking of something to pick up eight or ten yards to send Alex Henry out to try a long field goal. Burkhead along with Cody Green in the backfield. Burkhead right over the middle. And that's who he wanted to throw to, and he's going to be sacked. Couldn't get the ball away first time that they've gotten to him, and this time it was Forrest West, a sophomore out of Canton, Connecticut. West lined up. He's a defensive end, lined up his defensive tackle, working over the right guard, Ricky Henry, and they ran a stunt. And so uh, he came to the outside, and Marcel Jones couldn't get turned fast enough. So Henry to punt it away. Very high, good coverage kick. And it's going to hit and stay in bounds inside the 15 yard line, inside the 10. Listen to the crowd reacting. At the six, let's take a timeout. 10 3 Huskers. Welcome back to ESPN College Football, presented by K Jewelers. Time now to answer this week's Applike trivia question, which is, what's the last decade that Nebraska failed to win a conference title? Did you guess right? 1950s as a member of the Big Eight Conference. We were at a practice on Wednesday, and I was just looking at across the years that they've won conference championships. 43 in the history of this program. It's just pretty amazing. Play action to Jefferson. And uh, the ball incomplete and a flag comes down at the 20-yard line. Tony Clemens, the intended receiver. There is no foul on the play for defensive pass interference. Second down. I believe Dennard got in there at the very last second and tipped that thing away because that was a pretty good throw by Cody Hawkins to Clemens. And uh, Dennard was trailing. Dennard, a guy who doesn't get as much publicity as Mukamara. But uh, you talk to the coaches, look at film. Another guy who's got a very bright future ahead of him at the next level. Out of Rochelle, Georgia. Second down and 10. Cody Hawkins under center. And he'll pitch the ball back. This is Stewart. And Stewart turns it upfield to around the 10. It's going to be third down. And he'll still need about seven to pick up the first down. And a tough, tough call here for Eric Keesaw, the offensive coordinator. You don't want to get too risky. You've got a quarterback in Cody Hawkins who, in his past, has had some problems with interceptions. There's a look at Keesaw on the right. And we've already seen the ball tipped, of course, as a shorter quarterback. So I would think draw or screen here would be the call. Hawkins straight drop. Far sideline and the ball under thrown, and it's going to be incomplete. That was Paul Richardson, a freshman. 
that they were intending the ball to. Richardson along with Clements are two guys that they really think a lot of. And they're speedsters, and they would like to get either one of them to football any time they can. Well, what a wonderful job by Eric Haig sniffing out what, what was a fake wide receiver screen, and he chased Richardson. If he doesn't read that, Richardson's wide open, and that would have been a huge play. Just a, another one of those small things that Eric Haig does. Great recognition on a wide receiver screen that was not. Third punt of the afternoon by the Buffaloes, and here's the boot. Very low. But it takes a rugby kick bounce, and Burkhead has to run away from it, so it's going to go dead at the 48-yard line. And as we go to break, take another look at, uh, at this one, Grossnickel. Not sure he wanted to kick it quite this low, but uh, he got it out to the 48. And we are back as Nebraska prepares to put the ball in play following that 41-yard punt. This is Burkhead, and maybe a couple of yards, and that's it. And as our statistician, uh, Big E, Elvin Lindblad, uh, uh, said that he wrote on his Elmo chart here, 41 yards total, 19 by air and 22 by land, which is the truth on a rugby kick. That thing rolled on the ground, and nobody was on that side of the field, so it wound up being aesthetically not much, but it did the job. John Saunders in New York. Let's check with you quickly. Ron, this New York Life update. Don't count out Auburn just yet. Cam Newton, this is just to start the second half. 70 yards to Terrell Zachary. And a 24-14 lead now. Okay, John. Well, you know, <laughs> we know both of those teams have a lot of firepower, and particularly Auburn, so... They still got a lot of time in that ball game. Uh, over 11 and a half minutes in the third quarter. Third down here. They need to take it to the 41. Green still on his feet, and he's going to miss the first down by just just a yard. Well, and uh, we might see Alex Henry here. I think he's got the leg with the wind behind him. This would be close to a 60 yarder he's already got the school record of 57 yards can he talk can he talk bow into it well he's always so calm on nope. the sidelines no <laughs> there comes the signal <laughs> yeah. sean watson wants a couple of offensive players to come out there and uh there's a look at henry right there last or two years ago in this stadium a career high 57 yard field goal well, and it, w it would have been the winning points, and this was a school record. I remember there was a sack by Colorado. We were wondering if they were going to punt it or go for it on fourth down. Henry came out, nailed the school record 57-yarder, and then, of course, Indomitian and Sue had to steal his thunder with an interception return for a touchdown. Yeah. Otherwise, those would have been the winning points in that ball game. The interesting thing is Coach Bellini said to him on the sideline, he said, can you kick one this far? And he said, this kid is always just so nonchalant. And he said, well, Coach, I was kicking him beyond 60 in, uh, in warm-ups. So Bo said, yeah. go kick it. I, Look I, at these percentages right I think right arguably here. the best kicker in the history of college football. Uh, he and has not even one of the finalists for the Groza Award this year, which I don't understand. Yeah. The only, well, he he's only 16 for 17 and, and missed one from 51. So been kind of a down tough year for him. <laughs> it's kind of read the tight end in motion. Burkhead, big opening. He not only has the first down, add another five to it. And it's Terrell Smith, the freshman out of Patterson, New Jersey. Little guy, but boy, he's tough. And, and the reason you go for it there on fourth down is not just because you think you can make it. It's because of the way you can play defense. You're not afraid to put your defense back out on the field, even with good field position. A minute 39 seconds left to play in this halftime. And this is Hello. Tries to turn the corner and is going to be bumped out of bounds. Well, tonight at ESPN at 7 Eastern, Michael James leads the number one ranked Ducks against Arizona. Then at 10-15 Eastern, Kellen Moore and the Boise State Broncos face a tough road test against Nevada. It is two must-win games for BCS championship hopefuls. College football primetime on ESPN tonight. And with uh, Halu going out of bounds, Colorado catching a little break. They have three timeouts here. 
with a minute 31. I think you've got to start thinking if you're Colorado, using some of those timeouts to see if you can't get your offense back on the field before the half runs out. This is at Wildcat formation again. And Burkhead keeps it. Nothing to the right. Going to bounce it outside on the left. Will go out of bounds and stop the clock at 125. Jimmy Smith is the man who ran him out of bounds. Jimmy likes this stadium because in this ball game, as a player is down, and that's uh, Mike Caputo who is down. And let's check in with New York. John? Welcome to Times Square. John Saunders and Jesse Palmer in the Capital One Halftime Report. A lot of different scenarios as far as the BCS coming up this weekend. Things even tighter now. Four of the top five teams in the BCS standings facing major challenges. We could be in for a big BCS shakeup starting with a team struggling today. We'll try and sort it out when we come back with the Capital One Halftime Report. Okay, John, we look forward to that. Let's take a look at what happened to uh, Mike Caputo. And a tough guy to lose right in the middle of your screen. You can see 58. He, he's braced. You know, that's one of the things in a pile as he gets bent backwards by pre-check. But uh, when you get in those piles, they coach you not to brace. You've got to keep your feet active. And unfortunately, Caputo braced up and got rolled on. And, and this is a key guy. He's a little undersized, but very quick. And you know, talking to the Texas coaches about how they defended this offense, the reason they put a nose guard on him because he is so good at getting up to the linebacker level. Pestering your linebackers. Yep. That's exactly right. And they consider him a local kid because he's from Omaha, which is only about, what, 45, 50 yeah. miles to the east of here. So Pensick comes in, and again, first thing you got to think about is that snap. Both teams losing a center for short periods of time in this ball game. Flag down. I think it's offsides against Colorado, and the pass goes incomplete. Well, the crowd wanted pass interference called on the defender who was uh, all over Brandon Kenny. But I think they're going to yeah. get five free ones, are they not? It's going to be a third down at about two after the markoff. Yeah, quick jump by the left defensive end of Colorado and that's just a mental error trying to get a jump on the snap and uh, on an incomplete pass which would have brought up fourth down and Alex Henry would have trotted on you give them a chance now on third down again and make it even shorter that's a that's a big error by Colorado defensively as Caputo comes back in at center and it's going to be the direct snap to Burkhead Wildcat formation again Fakes a throw, then goes to the left, and he's still fighting. I'll tell you that that last effort may have gotten the first down. No, nope, I don't think so. Well, I see. Well, they are saying move the sticks. Ricky Henry, nice job of blocking there, helping out his uh, tailback, Rex Burkhead, in this case, the direct snap guy. Burke had 98 rushing yards. Career high 129 against Iowa State. Pitchback comes. Is he going to try to throw it? Yes, he is. That's Reed to tight end. Throws it complete to Kenny. Tyler Reed to Kenny. Jaleel Brown got away with a little bit of a push off not called but uh, good call by Sean Watson he said if you can throw a double pass we can throw a halfback pass extra point is good and take a big look at it here uh, you've got one on one right here you're going to see the toss sweep and uh, a really good coverage by Brown. And watch at the very end. Brandon Kenny does a good job. Goes by Brown, does not buy it. And the left arm right there got himself separation. The reason that that's not called is the field judge, the receiver's body is right in line with the defender. And it's so hard to see that backside arm come up. So a good savvy move by Kenny to do that, but uh, a missed call on offensive pass interference. 
But again, stress that it's it's difficult when the, the field judge is standing there. He's in direct line. He was in a great position right at the pylon. It's his pylon on that. And it's you can't see through the body of the receiver to see that. So you rarely see that called. And if you're a receiver and the receivers coach Ted Gilmore, you work on that. You, you know where the officials are going to be standing. And uh, that was just a savvy move. So Burkhead tosses the touchdown pass to Brandon Kenny. Kunala kicks it off. And this one five yards deep, and he'll go and take a knee. And now let's take a look at this week's BCS standings brought to you by Tostitos. And of course, TCU and Boise State. Unfortunately for TCU, the only game they have left is against very weak New Mexico. Tonight, Boise State has to take on a tough Nevada team there, waiting to see what's going to happen with Auburn. Of course, they're uh, focused in on their own ball games. But uh, Oregon, I feel like Oregon's going to get well tonight against Arizona. They had a week off after a tough game against Cal, where they only won by two. And Arizona just, had a week off, too. Yeah. Yeah, we were out there doing that ball game, and Mike Stoops would said, hey, you get a week off before Oregon. He said, yes, but they do, too. <laughs> well, Counteraction right here with Stewart, and he'll take it out across the 25. And Dominican Sue played uh, a game yesterday and is up here today. They're going to retire his jersey number. Very conservative by uh, Colorado here. A little shot down 17 to 3 that they wouldn't be doing some type of hurry up and try to get some points on this drive. Stewart, nothing to the right and reroutes it. Picks up a couple, be third down, Will Compton defensively. And that's going to be the last play of the first half. And let's go down to Janine Edwards. Coach, a tough way for the Buffaloes to head into <laughs> halftime with Nebraska just scoring again. What does your defense most need to hear from you right now? Well, we've got to find a way to stop the run. Right now, they're moving the ball on us. They're making plays. We're not making plays. But this game is not over. You told me before the game that time of possession was going to be crucial. How can you get your offense to buy themselves a little more yeah, time? We, yeah, we got to get our offense moving. So, you know, we're, we're, just, we're just warming up. Thanks, Coach. So our score at halftime is the Huskers 17 and the Buffaloes 3. Now let's go to New York. John Saunders and Jesse Palmer. Gentlemen. Ron, thanks a lot and welcome to the Capital One Halftime Report. Taylor Martinez not in the game because of an ankle, not because of a coach's decision. And last week was hobbled because of the ankle. You can really see them lose their explosiveness. They lack a lot of that when they don't have a healthy Taylor Martinez playing quarterback. The first eight games of the season, this offense averaged at least three plays per game of 30 yards or more. Since then, they've only had two plays of 30 or plus yards. Both came last week on the run against Texas A&M in a losing effort. It's so much easier for defenses to key against this physical Nebraska rushing attack without that home run threat playing quarterback. Having said that, you don't have to be that explosive on offense when your defense gives up less than 90 yards in a half. And that's why Nebraska is still winning this football game. Nebraska trying to get to the Big 12 championship game. Meanwhile, now the Big 12 South. Oklahoma State against Oklahoma, as we just mentioned. Oklahoma State is very simple. Win the game, you're in the Big 12 championship Oklahoma game. Oklahoma State has not beaten Oklahoma since 2002. If Oklahoma is able to win that game, then we have a three-way tie atop the Big 12 South Division. It'll be broken by the team ranked highest in the final BCS standings. If the two highest ranked teams are within one spot of each other, then you look at the head-to-head -head during the regular season. That breaks the tie. If it's Oklahoma and Texas A&M atop those standings, Texas A&M goes to the Big 12 championship game. My head spinning. <laughs> We've been doing this for a couple of weeks. With, with the tiebreakers in that one as well. But Oklahoma State, yeah. this was a team yeah. that was picked to finish near the bottom of their division. 
It's been an amazing job done by Mike Gundy. Mike Gundy has been unbelievable this year. You're right, John. This was supposed to be rebuilding year this year. They had lost their starting quarterback. They had lost nine starters from defense. They had lost four starters on the offensive line. They had lost two first-round picks to the National Football League. They've done a great job, a great hire by Mike Gundy this offseason to bring Dana Holgerson in as offensive coordinator where he was at Houston last year. They've been blowing up, whether it's been Brandon Whedon at quarterback, Kendall Hunter at running back, Justin Blackman at wide receiver. You cannot figure this offense out. They rack up yards. They rack up points. Mike Gundy is a candidate for Coach of the Year. No question about it. This is College Football presented by K Jewelers. Today's game is part of the Dr. Pepper rivalry series and our score here in Lincoln as we begin the third quarter is the Huskers 17 and the Buffaloes 3. Well, let's take a look now at the Pacific Life game summary stats. Well, in the first half, obviously, a lot of it going Nebraska's way and a lot of it having to do with the two-headed monster. They have it running back with Taylor Martinez out at quarterback. It's been all about Rex Burkhead and Roy Hellu Jr. Burkhead with 98 rushing yards. And, Ron, you mentioned earlier his career high earlier this season, 129 against Iowa State. So he's on his way. I would expect same, same for Nebraska and for Colorado. I think they have to continue to try to get Rodney Stewart going because Nebraska secondary is just playing so well. This kickoff is returnable from the four, and it's Jaffe. And Jaffe will take it out across the 25-yard line. Oh, well, we're very happy to have Mike Bone, the athletic director at the University of Colorado, to come in and visit with us for a couple of seconds. Let's get the unpleasantness over with first. You, you had to go through a firing as far as your football program is concerned, and Coach Hawkins, uh, and I know that you guys have started to search. Some names you can mention, some game, names you cannot because guys are actively coaching right now. Which ones can you tell us, Mike? Well, I can tell you this. We're going we're gonna to find a football coach that's a great fit for our university to take advantage of our premier uh, environment in Boulder, not only academically, but also around our football program, our great history. And we'll find somebody that's very, very special for us and can galvanize all the great things that we have going for us. Hawkins, ball is tipped, and it goes incomplete. Ed Cunningham is a Southern California guide, and he likes the fact you guys are going to the Pac-12. Well, we're very, very excited about it. We have 50,000 more alumni in the Pac-12 footprint than we had in the Big 12, and uh, we have almost 45% of our students every year come from out of state. The number one state they come from is California, followed closely by Arizona and the Northwest. So that's a nice fit for us, and we're very excited about it. Ed, let me get this play right here, and then we'll... Uh Get you with a question or two. Straight ahead, Stewart, and that's a gain of a couple. You know, looking at the the search, and of course Eric Bieniemy's name is on there. A former Buff who is now with the Minnesota Vikings was a recruiting coordinator for UCLA, no Southern California. That's got to fit into the thinking because those great teams from the 80s and 90s were built with a lot of guys from Southern California, I would assume. Well, you're right. No question. Darian Hagan's a Southern Colorado great player for us. Uh, Rashawn Salam's from the Southern California area. And uh, when you have some former buffs that are doing a great job in coaching, they're certainly viable for us along with great coaches like Bill McCartney and other people that have been around our program. Hawkins deep over the middle. Ball tipped and it is going to be intercepted by Gomes. And Gomes will be tackled just inside the 45-yard line. It was Paul Richardson who tipped the ball, and now a flag is down at the 43. There is no foul on the play for a horse collar tackle. First down. Wonderful job by Gomes. Gomes, a guy who also plays in that middle, but watch as he drops back. He's in a linebacker position and does a wonderful job trailing Richardson, tips the ball to himself. And Gomes, a guy who uh, has really done well under the Pelini brothers, uh, credits them uh, turning him into a better player, and that was just a wonderful read by him and a good play on the ball. That move takes it uh, straight forward for a couple of yards. 
Ed, you had uh, another question, another point you wanted to make? You know, looking at what you guys uh, need to do for a head coach, when do you want to make that decision? What, what's your, your preferred timeline? Well, we'd certainly like to make it a, a lot sooner than later if we can. But again, it's more important for us to get a great fit. A lot of coaches are still coaching today, and it'll be important for us to be able to have access to as big a pool as possible. Ed Lou again cuts it up. 10, count it out to 15, and they will end up with a gain of very close to 20 yards as Travis Sandersfield comes up to make the tackle for the Buffaloes. Mike, thanks so much for coming by and spending time with us. Best of luck to Colorado as you move to the to the Pac-12 conference Thank or you, whatever the new name is going to be. You guys are great friends to college football. We appreciate that, and go Buffs. You're very kind. Great. Thank thanks, you. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate your time. So Helu with the big gainer takes it down inside the 20-yard line. This time it's Burkhead with the direct snap. And he will move it to the left side and a good job of pursuit on the defense as they force him out of the pocket and Burkhead still won't go down. And the youngster who... Now what a great day so far for Rex Burkhead. On senior day, the sophomore has been the go-to guy out of the Wildcat, of course, the injury to Taylor Martinez changing things up a bit for them offensively. Got into the throwing game. We were wondering if he was going to throw. That was one of the things that people around town wondering as much as he was going to be in the shotgun formation, the Wildcat, if he'd throw it. And uh, Brandon that was Kenny. Perfect. Yeah. That was it. And by the way, I referred to him as Plano East. He's from Plano High School. Rex Burkhead, a sophomore. And uh, this play is not going to get back to the line of scrimmage I do not believe hello was the ball carrier and it was Michael Sapili who made the, the tackle how about uh, Smith in that secondary Terrell Smith 11 tackles and eight of those are solo well it's tough when your safety has to be making all of those tackles give credit to the offensive line for Nebraska locking up the front seven but uh, Smith a young man who's had to play because of all the injuries they were hoping to redshirt him but after the Texas Tech game, they had to pull that red shirt off. Of course, Anthony Perkins injured. What a nice fake and a touchdown pass to Brandon Kenny. Cody Green gave a pump, gave the fake, and then threw the ball perfectly. Jimmy Smith was the man on the cover. And Smith will be called for the penalty. He... he Gave it up and figured I'm beat. I might as well Pass go for it. Pass interference. Number three of the defense. Penalties decline. Touchdown. Brandon Kenny runs a great move. Really sells it with his head as he looks back inside like he's running the slant. And then Jimmy Smith decides just to run into Kenny. But because that ball was thrown back to the inside, wasn't able to give Smith credit. He knew he was beat. And uh, Kenny did a good job of moving his body. And that pump fake really sold it. Alex Henry to attempt the extra point, and he's got it. So one more look at the touchdown from Cody Green to Brandon Kinney. Nebraska 24-3. With 11 minutes and 58 seconds left in the third quarter. And Konotic prepares to kick it off. And if he gets a touchback on this one, it'll be 121 touchbacks in his career. And this one is going to be returned from four yards deep. Jefferson. And Jefferson short of the 20-yard line. And now... For our Big 12 Conference update, brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Well, of course, a lot of changes going on in the Big 12 with Nebraska going to the Big 10 and Colorado headed for the Pac-12. But I would these argue, guys that are coming back. I would argue with these quarterbacks coming back, you could have as many as three teams, Oklahoma, Texas A&M, and Oklahoma State, in the top 10 preseason next year. But you always, to me, when you look at a conference overall going into the season, who are the returning quarterbacks? That's as good a group, if not the best group, in any conference in the country of quarterbacks returning for next season. Colorado 
trying to get something going offensively. Stewart. Good job of containment on the part of the Huskers. It'll be a gain of four. On the Big 12 Conference, this is what it's going to look like. Ten teams. Colorado, of course, to the Pac-10. Nebraska to the Big Ten. No divisions in the Big 12. And a proposed nine-game conference schedule. Every team will play each other over the course of the season. And, and I love that. You know, go, if you only had eight, there'd be those years where the two top teams wouldn't play each other. I like the fact that they're all going to play each other during the season. Nine quality games. Hawkins, ball is tipped. That's danger, and it's picked off. Huskers get it, and it's Hay. Still on his feet inside the five-yard line, and he's down to the four. First, Gomes, who was a senior, got an interception, and now Eric Hay. Well, it, a let's, senior. Let's not forget Jared Crick, the Big 12 preseason defensive player of the year. He's quiet, not had quite the stats that he had last year. Of course, he had a five-sack game against uh, Baylor last season, but... Good job reading the quarterback. He's 6'6". He's taller than most defensive tackles. That's that ball up in the air. And Haig, you know, you and I, Ron, have done enough Nebraska to see how good this young man is. And uh, he was itching for a touchdown on senior day here. You know, other people, as you mentioned, have got better numbers. But he is a glue guy. And they literally changed the defense so they could keep him on the field instead of sending him to the side. They were tired of seeing him run off the field because he makes so many things happen. They invented, as uh, Nebraska quickly calls a timeout, not liking who they... Now they already got the delay. There is no foul for delay again. This is the first charge timeout to Nebraska of the second half. ESPN's College Football on ABC, brought to you by Mitsubishi. Experience the all-new Outlander Sport at your Mitsubishi dealer. Dr. Pepper, there's nothing like a pepper. And Pacific Life, for insurance, annuities, and investments, choose Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. Paintings of the Nebraska Academic All-Americans are located in the Hall of Distinction on the walls of the Hewitt Center. Nebraska currently leads the nation with 279 because two were added this week. Burkhead lined up to take the direct snap. Holds on to it. No place to go on the right. Trying to bounce outside to the left. Little stiff arm and then tosses it in the end zone for a touchdown. And I keep looking. I don't think there were any, any uh, linemen downfield. They were so close to the goal line. Kyder Reed is the man who made the catch. Well, this was a throw from the start. And because of some pressure, and he's, he's, looking, laughing. He's, he's looking for Cotton right from the snap. And Kyler Reed, who is at the top of the screen, does a wonderful job of staying alive. And because the corner has to come off now, because Burkhead was about to get the edge, Bur uh, Burkhead does a wonderful job seeing that and just flicks it over to Reed. Now, you will never, ever get his head to calm down. Two touchdown passes in <laughs> one game. Come on. <laughs> Henry with the extra point attempt, and he's got it. And the, and the head coach got a little grin on his face. He thought, good heavens, what a pass. Well, this was at halftime. Tom Osborne with Indomitian Sue. Now with the Detroit Lions as they're retiring his number. And let's go down to the sideline. Janine Edwards is with Big Sue. That's right, Ronnie. You know, he closed out his Husker career last season with six year-end awards, including Player of the Year. And Ron mentioned the game yesterday with the Patriots. And I want to ask you, what's the biggest difference between playing college and playing in the NFL? Anything unexpected that you've discovered? Um, yes and no. Uh, I'd probably say the biggest difference between the NFL and college is that week in and week out, you gotta, you're going against great veteran players. As this last week, I played against the Patriots, going against a lot of Pro Bowl offensive linemen. And, uh, nice sack on Brady yesterday, by the way. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, it, 
But like I was saying, like it, you're going against a lot of guys that have been in the league for a lot of a long period of time and pro bowlers at that. And you got to each week you got to come in with a new game plan to go against that guy because they're all different. So it's more or less in college you have some games that are easy, some games that are real challenging as a Big 12 championship playing against Texas, Oklahoma. So I think that's each week you have to come prepared in the NFL. We thank you for joining us here, and thanks for visiting Lincoln on this holiday weekend, and we'll let you watch the rest of the game, too. Thanks. thanks. Okay, Janine, thanks so very much. Let's go back to New York. John, I understand we have an update on the Auburn-Alabama game. Well, we mentioned that Alabama was going to be sorry for letting things get away from them, and here Cam Newton goes seven yards to Philip Lutzenkirchen, and it's a 28-27 lead. Wow. They have been so good in the second half this year with yeah. trailing, and that game looked like it was going to be a blowout the other way. This is Hawkins. Rolls the pocket, throws it just a little too far in front, and a flag from deep down in the middle of the field. Scotty McKnight, who we have not talked about mm -mm. today, was the intended receiver. And McKnight, 47 games in a row with a reception, leads the country. Pass interference, number 80 of the offense. Penalty will be half the distance to the goal. First Paul down. Richardson. And uh, Scotty McKnight, a guy who's had a wonderful career. Brian Cabral, the interim head coach. And give a lot of credit to uh, Cabral. You know, they, they had a five-game slide that culminated in the firing of Dan Hawkins when they gave up 35 points in the last 11 minutes to Kansas. He's done a really good job of keeping the spirits up and uh, going on a 2-0 run to get themselves in position for potentially getting into a bowl game. Now whistles all over the place and more flags. Prior to the snap. Ball start. 63 the offense. Five yard penalty. Remains first down. It's Atkins who moved. And uh, for some reason, the crowd here in Lincoln enjoying the fact that the other team is being penalized. Well, you look at uh, Rex Burkhead. I'm not sure what that passer efficiency rating would be, but it'd be way up there. But uh, outperforming the two other quarterbacks two two in this game. <laughs> I think you're right. That head may swell a little bit. <laughs> oh, he'll let him hear about it. I don't blame him. Jefferson in a tailback. And they give the ball to him in a draw. Jefferson will be stopped after a gain of maybe a couple. Will Compton defensively. And uh, defensively for Nebraska, pretty much same, same. They have not given up a touchdown in uh, the last two and a half ball games. And they are just swarming. It starts in their secondary. They take nothing away from their front guys, but uh, there are guys littering this secondary with Mukamara, Dennard, Haig. Also the young guy, Siante Evans, who had to play some when uh, Dennard had a concussion. All of these guys, I think, have bright futures beyond the college level. Compton now with six tackles on the afternoon. Play action. Hawkins deep at the end zone. Has to hurry. Gets that one away to Stewart. And Stewart still fighting, spins around at the 22-yard line. Not enough for the first down. But it'll be third down, and it's going to be about seven yards. Courtney Osborne defensively. And what a nice job by uh, Cody Hawkins. Young man wants to be a coach when he's done playing. Positioned himself well for that. Think of all of the things that he has gone through. And uh, playing as well as he's played his entire career the last couple ball games here. Good pressure by Thaddeus Randall. Sidesteps it. Just buys himself just enough time to make this a manageable third down. Hawkins gets it out. Not enough for the first down. I'm telling you, what a good open field tackle on Scotty McKnight. It looked for the world he was going to get it. And Eric Haig is the man who caught him and stopped him just short. Now there was a flag down back at the 14 yard line. After the play was over, personal foul number 94 of the defense. 15-yard penalty will result in a first down. Well, that's Jared Crick. He must have.
gotten into it with an offensive lineman because nobody hit Cody Hawkins after the throw. Nebraska penalties now six for a total of 60 yards. Huskers lead at 31 to three on this senior day. And we have 9-0-3 left to play third quarter. And negated a very good tackle by Eric Haig that yeah. would have forced fourth down. <laughs> it, it would have. Well, this is Jefferson. They had him in the Wildcat formation. And uh, then shoved out of bounds on the far sideline by Gomes. And Jefferson, a young man who had to switch to uh, running back from wide receiver when Brian Lockridge was lost for the year. And, and it's worth mentioning, you know, a, a tough run for Dan Hawkins this season and a tough run for Colorado. But the number of injuries that they have had to deal with in their secondary receivers, running backs have just been very difficult. They've had to move guys all over the place. Scotty McKnight in motion now comes back outside. Pumps once, going to go. He's got man coverage and has a man. At the 10, at the 5, Paul Richardson. Touchdown, Colorado Buffaloes. Remember the slant and fade we saw by Brandon Kenny? Well, this is a wonderful move by Paul Richardson, a true freshman. 50-yard catch, but watch the, the excellent move. And Richardson, a guy that they think the world of. And Denner gets caught. He, he thought he was jumping a slant and give Hawkins credit. He laid it out there perfectly. If Richardson had to slow down at all, Denner would have made the tackle before the touchdown. Nice fake also by Cody Hawkins. Goodman with the extra point attempt. And he's got it. So with 8-19 left in the third quarter. New score. Huskers 31 and the Buffaloes 10. And when we come back, Another look at a Nebraska Colorado Classic from 99. Well, Colorado scored 24 points in the fourth quarter of this 1999 game and it tied it. But Nebraska quarterback Eric Couch is going to dive over for a touchdown in overtime. And Nebraska won it 33 to 30. And of course, that was the last time Nebraska won a conference championship. They went on to beat Texas in the Big 12 championship. And uh, here comes Colorado lining up for an onside kick. I, I like the idea of this, but why would you show it? If, you, if you're going to do it, try to catch Nebraska off guard. Well, here it comes, takes the big bounce up. Ball as this goes out of bounds. Time now for the Chick-fil-A drive. Well, it was uh, Re Re it was uh, Rex Burkhead trying to find Ben Cotton, but Cotton gets caught up. He went to fake block, and then as Burkhead goes to his right and realizes nothing's there because Cotton got held up and he gets a little pressure, comes back, and then Jimmy there is Smith no foul for a kick out of bounds is in the coverage and uh, he has to come off because it looks like Burkhead is going to get the edge and when he does Burkhead quickly sees Kyler Reed is left uncovered and flicks it for the touchdown second passing touchdown of the game for Burkhead well we now have our third tailback in the ball game for Nebraska Robinson Dontradius Robinson he gets the handoff and he'll take it straight ahead for about three yards in uh, Sapili makes the tackle for the Colorado Buffaloes. And Robinson is uh, is their big back, 230 pounder. And uh, I think that he's in the game because we're going to see a lot of between the tackle runs. They want a big body in there. And right now, I think this is management time for Bo Pelini and his staff. They already have so many guys injured. And if you have a third string guy like Robinson that can get it done, why risk an injury to Burkhead or Hillou? Just no reason. the handoff and out to the 40 yard line as uh, Nobriga makes the tackle. Robinson again on the carry and it, we're going to see a steady dose of this kind of situation. And uh, for those Nebraska fans that are looking for more excitement I don't I don't know that 
Bo's going to be providing any trick plays or anything because uh, they're trying to keep people healthy and get out with the victory. Roy Hallou has come back in. Well, and with that slant and go for the touchdown too quick for his liking, I'm sure he told Sean Watson, let's pound it a little bit and eat some of this clock up 21. Quick pass. Nice job by Brock Meyer. Ed, I'm telling you, he caught the ball. He held up, caught it a little bit behind him, spun around and picks up. You think you've been playing every ball? Well, game. you know, out at practice on Wednesday, I was scrambling around because I there was no number nine anywhere to be found on the depth chart. But I watched him in space, catching the ball. He, he just looks so very natural and uh, not a bad place to uh, get your first couple of catches on senior day when you're a senior. Boy, for sure. Quarterback's going to hold on to it and still fighting his green. And green's going to take it down to the 12 and a half yard line. Well, and this is what uh, Cody Green gives you. Just consistency. He reads this play very well. Obviously doesn't have the explosive ability of uh, Taylor Martinez, but a play that looked like it was going to be four or five yards becomes 11 and a first down. Carl Pelini, the defensive coordinator, talking with his uh, brother, who of course is the head coach. Smith now with 13 tackles for the Buffalo. Hello. And he's going to take it close to the six. You know, it was interesting in that conversation this morning and uh, talking with Coach Lindy just before he went on his jog. You know, he admitted, he said, we all thought that until Martinez came up and started having these bursts of speed and breaking away for 70 and 80 yards, he said, we thought Cody Green would wind up being the number one. We liked his poise, just everything about uh, his demeanor. Read in motion. And give it to Hello. Got a blocker in front, and he's following him all the way to the one. Ricky Henry is the man who was just driving, driving, driving. And, and this offensive line, and we saw them against uh, Missouri, just gash the front. A good front of the Missouri Tigers, but uh, I think the biggest improvement for this team over last year, the offensive line had guys in and out of the lineup with injuries, but this group has played together mostly the entire year. And when they get it going, they are really good run blocks, good pullers and trappers and open up huge holes. Legate in the ball game at fullback. They give it to Hello and do not see two arms up. And they're gonna point down like, did the ball come loose? Came loose late, but uh, the uh, side judge came in. Excuse me, the linesman came in and immediately said that uh, Hillou was down. Taylor Martinez, of course, nursing a right ankle sprain and a turf toe on his left foot. And watching him. That's in Niles Omaha's. Paul right next to it. Yeah. Boy, what a shame for Niles Paul not to be able to play his last ball game is from Omaha. But. Uh, they can really use those guys uh, if they end up winning this ball game next week in the Big 12 Championship. I doubt about that. Hello. Good job by the Buffalo defense. They hold them out, and that's Hardigan who is at carrier. the bottom of the stack. Well, and that's that's twice where they've pulled a lineman. I always think when you're down inside the two, don't pull anybody. Just go straight ahead. Don't be surprised. Uh, if you see on the next play, the see the right line, guard there, and anytime you get penetration, and that's, you know, Ricky Henry is just tripping over bodies. That's pre-check. A defense tackle got penetration. I think you just go straight ahead here. Kobe Green under center. Play action. And I think they're going to get Jaleel Brown the same way that they got Jimmy Smith for pass interference. Pass interference, number 23 to defense. Penalties decline. Touchdown. And a, and a good play fake. Here's Reed right here. Does a good job on his release. He releases clean, and, and Brown got caught looking a little bit into the backfield. I think inside the one, you're playing Nebraska at home. You're expecting an inside run. Good call, good changeup by Sean Watson, the offensive coordinator. 
Henry with the extra point attempt. Got it. Cody Green on the sideline and got a big smile on his face. His ball club now up 38 to 10. One more look. John Saunders, thanks very much. John, you need to know that Bob Goodrich uh, just ran a victory lap around our truck downstairs. <laughs> our producer, who of course played at SMU, and was a very, very good tight end. Played under Hayden Fry yeah, at SMU. I think right. a lot of people forget that Hayden Fry was at SMU before he went to Iowa. Yep. And Iowa, a team that will replace this rivalry for Nebraska next year because uh, as they go into the Big Ten, their last game of the year will be against the Auk uh, Iowa Hawkeyes. And I think I think that's going to turn into a terrific rivalry. Oh boy, I, I do too. In fact, some of the writers at, uh, at lunch today came over and asked, you know, do you, you think ABC would maintain this Friday time slot for that matchup? Why not? Yeah. That would be yeah. a, a glorious rivalry to have on thank the day after Thanksgiving. Yeah. I mean, you, you hate to lose Colorado Nebraska. It's been so great for so many years, but that would be a, a good replacement. Nice pass. Good tough catch by Richardson, and he's going to have nine yards and may have ten yards. Continue to move the pile, and he does. They'll move the sticks. Well, this week on ESPN's Monday Night Football, it's a battle in the NFC West. San Francisco will take on Arizona. It's at 8.30 Eastern. And, of course, coverage begins at 7 Eastern with Monday Night Countdown by Applebee's. Now, as Paul Richardson makes another big catch, you know, the, the guy who's going to be the next head coach here, of course, Brian Cabral in the running, 2-0 right now is the interim. Uh, but the cupboard is not bare here. There is some good young talent. Rodney Stewart, a junior, coming back. You'll get uh, Tyler Hansen back, who's out with a ruptured screen quarterback. Hawkins just throws it away. But uh, Brian Cabral has been a dutiful Buffalo. He uh, was the interim, named the interim head coach. This is his 22nd season with Colorado. He has worked for four different head coaches, including Dan Hawkins, and uh, was also an all-conference linebacker on the team that won the 1976 Big, e Big 8 championship, went on to the NFL and won a Super Bowl with the Chicago Bears. But he has done just a terrific job keeping the spirits up and getting these guys refocused and going on a two-game winning streak. What a big opening for Stewart. He's going to move the change again. Austin Cassidy comes over to make the tackle. But that is uh, enough for the first down. I can't, uh, this is a great shot right here because folks I keep talking about his size and so does it look how much smaller he is than the lineman and <laughs> virtually everybody else in the huddle at 5'6 175 pounds but uh, third year in a row that he's led Colorado in rushing of course Daryl Scott the highest rated running back in the country recruited a couple years ago beat him out he transferred to South Florida all he's done is uh, continue to run hard Saturday Night Football on ABC has a battle between Big 12 rivals, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. In fact, they call it Bedlam. The winner of that game is going to be in the driver's seat for the spot in the Big 12 championship. And Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines on ABC, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Well, two of the best receivers in college football will go head-to-head -head in that one between Broyles, Ryan Broyles, and Justin Blackman. Jefferson on the direct snap. He was in the Wildcat formation, and the coaches told us that he would be doing that, and he's forced out at the 48. Well, they do it in two different ways. Broyles, more of the small slot receiver, 106 receptions on the year. He's been battling ankle injuries, but seems to be gimping around during warmups, and it looks fluid as can be during the game. But Justin Blackman, just a breakout star with 94 catches and two quarterbacks that are as good as any in the country. To me, Brandon Whedon has been just a, a super, super surprise. And a lot of people, including myself, Figured Oklahoma State would be four, five, or six in the South, and there they are with only one loss. Could wrap it up tomorrow night. I tell you, and the kid is singularly responsible for so much of that. Straight ahead with the running play on third down, and he got enough for the first down. 
crowd reacted like the ball may have come loose. But uh, the official says no. Dennard gets credit for the stop. And it's hard, you know, the coaches that coach in leagues that have a championship game, and of course Nebraska going to the Big Ten, which will have 12 and a championship game, they always talk about you don't want to play a team you played earlier in the year and you beat. And I know that sounds a little weird, but it's kind of a reverse psychology. And if Oklahoma State does win, of course, Nebraska went up there and won 51 to 41. And, uh, you know, you wonder if your players think, ah, we've already done it once, and they're focused. Hawkins looking, looking, throws, and just actually that was, I think, closer to a throwaway than anything. Paul Richardson is the man that they wanted. But that secondary of the Huskers is not going to let that talented freshman get too lonesome out there. They're going to have somebody with him. And, and I know that uh, Bo Pelini would never admit it, but I would think it, it looks like A&M can't do it. A&M would have to finish within one of Oklahoma if Oklahoma wins in the BCS. But uh, I would think that uh, if he had his choice, he'd rather see Oklahoma. At least that would be give them something fresh to focus on in their preparation for the championship game. Swing pass to Stewart and hit in the open field, and going to be a gain of a couple, and that's about it. Well, and, and there he is again, Eric Haig. You just uh, and unfortunately, wow. This is a guy that they invented a new position for. Yeah, they and he is such a good. Uh, it looked to me like Stewart. It looked to me like Stewart was going to get that edge, and then here comes Haig at 6'2", 210 pounds. But he just does, he's just so good in the open field. And, and the, the burst, I mean, he comes off, he was actually, pardon me, he was lined up in the slot on that one. And let's see if we can figure out what may have happened here. You know, he got hit in the back as uh, Ryan Miller was coming over to try to help finish that off. He's got a couple of tackles and an interception in today's ball game. Well, and you look at all of the injured guys that Nebraska has, likely to win this one up 28, almost the end of the third quarter. But with Taylor Martinez out, Niles Paul out, you, you can't lose a guy like Eric Haig, especially the reason Eric Haig is so important is because of the spread offenses you have to defend in this league. Well, regardless of who you play next week between Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, the reason they invented that position and that Eric Haig fills it so well is because he doesn't have to come off the field. He can play linebacker in the run. He can play in that nickel on the slot. He's very important. All-out blitz, and the ball is caught, and a flag is down. Actually, the ball did come out. And the flag came down. They're going to call pass interference against Amukamare. Amukamara. Pass interference. Defense number 21. Penalties 15 yards from the previous spot. First down. And it did look to me like Amukamara got there just a hair early. Cody Hawkins doing a good job of getting this ball off. Watch one on one coverage. Good break on the ball, but he rakes across the arm. That's that's the proper call. Awfully close, but uh, good break for Colorado. And you uh, you can't be too upset with that because it was good coverage. I mean, good. Yeah. You know, we, we saw that uh, in the first half against Oklahoma State. Mukamara got burnt a couple of times by Justin Blackman. He was in position. Just Blackman went up and made a great play. And Blackman is such a physical specimen. And then second half, they held uh, Oklahoma State to only 14 points, so they really turned it up a notch in that second half in that game. Ninth play of the drive coming up for Colorado. Hawkins going to go long. Got a man at the five. It is caught, and it's touchdown Will Jefferson. 29 yards on the pass play. Well, and Jefferson, a young man who we were talking about earlier, uh, had been playing wide receiver. And uh, here he lines up in the backfield and has a feel for running that. He runs what's called the wheel route, where he's going to run out and then up. And uh, good job of turning his head back inside and just tough for Will Compton, the middle linebacker, to have to run with a guy who really is a wide receiver out running a go route. 
So the clock had run out. They will kick the extra point. Then we'll take a timeout and head to the fourth quarter. Goodman with the attempt, and he's got it. Show the new score, Nebraska 38 and Colorado 17. Well, Nebraska takes advantage of two Colorado turnovers in the third quarter, and they extend their lead. And our thanks to the ladies, the uh, Nebraska cheerleaders, for bringing us back on the air. 38-17, to 17, our new score. And I know they're down 21, but Coach Cabral has got to look at the situation. He's still got to be happy with what his football team is doing because they're continuing to fight and have picked up a couple of uh, touchdowns here to make it respectable. This is Marlowe. Well, I talked about the situation with Colorado, but if you're Nebraska, now do you really start to rest or get a lot of people off? Because you know, you, it's hard because you're 21, you think, and they've, Colorado's already shown that they're going to try an onside kick, but I think, yeah, you're going to see Dontravius Robinson. Um, Cody Green's got to go. You might see Kel Ron Kellogg, the, the four-string quarterback, because Zach Lee's still banged up. But, yeah, I think you're going to start seeing a lot of guys because you've already seen Eric Haig walk off with an injury. You don't have Taylor Martinez. And at this point, you've got to start thinking about the Big 12 championship game in Dallas next week. Well, Green hands the ball off. And again, straight ahead, the Pacific Life game summary stats for you. Well, obviously, heavily slanted towards Nebraska. Not surprised at all at the uh, play selection. 41 rush and only 14 pass. Of course, two of those passes by a running back, Burkhead, for two <laughs> touchdowns. Uh, but uh, he has scored one running and has thrown two touchdown passes. Pretty complete day for the youngster. Green goes straight ahead with uh, Helu. And Janine, let's check in with you. Well, Ron, just like you and Ed were talking about giving some starters some rest here for the Huskers, I was talking to offensive coordinator Sean Watson before the game, and he said, this game could be just what the doctor orders for our quarterbacks. Zach Lee still nursing that injured hand. He said he's close to being 100%, but they didn't want to have to use him today. And also Taylor Martinez has been getting an extra time to rehab the turf toe and the ankle, and the idea is to have three healthy quarterbacks for the Big 12 championship next week. Going to give you guys an amazing stat here in just a second. There's a green looks, drills the pass over the middle, and a little too high and hard. That was only the second snap by Nebraska in their own territory this half. Wow. Well, and, and you know, the turf toe thing for Taylor Martinez, he really, even in warm ups today, after seeing him Wednesday, I, I'm not sold that he's going to be ready for next week's game. Those turf toes linger. I think forever. you can get the ankle. I think that ankle will be ready long before that turf toe will be ready. And I, I'm just not convinced that he'll be even close to 100% by next weekend. Clemens in to do the punting for the Huskers. And he gets a good one away. Nice high spiral. Coming down to the 26 to Clemens. And Clemens gets what he can and then goes out of bounds. So let's take a timeout. Uh oh, we got a flag. A late flag. Way on the other side of the field. After the play was over, personal foul, 51 of the receiving team. The penalty will be 15 yards from the end of the play. First down. Well, the Auburn Tigers have just knocked off Alabama. We'll tell you more about it when we come back. Hmm. 
So people have heard of Black Friday and Cyber Monday, but this Saturday, November the 27th, marks the first Small Business Saturday. And if you find yourself out tomorrow, make it a point of supporting your local small businesses. In fact, log on to Facebook.com forward slash Small Business Saturday if you want to learn more. I bet a small business made that hot dog t-shirt launcher. I bet they That's did impressive. <laughs> pass got it complete at the 32 ball comes loose knocked out by Nebraska and it's Gomes down the sideline and he's going to be tackled at the three yard line looked like the ball was just punched out Alfonso Dennard making amends for uh, giving up the touchdown on the slant and go earlier to Richardson comes up as Scotty McKnight makes the catch Good route by McKnight, and Dennard was protecting himself against the long one. And uh, that's it. He, he, just not a very good job of McKnight tucking that ball away. And Dennard playing that technique, just not to get deep, deep right now. You're up 38-17. Good technique by Dennard, good break. And then he brings that fist up and knocks the ball loose. Robinson back in the ball game at tailback. Get in. The officials say no. Terrell Smith making the tackle. Let's see if Robinson. It looked to me like he may have. Uh, nope. Boy, I, you can't tell, but it sure looked to me like that ball got over the pylon. And if you're driven out by a defender and you cross the goal line, you get goal line extended. Terrell Smith, 15 tackles today. And they take the play straight ahead. It is Cody Green, touchdown, Nebraska. And you've got to think that this started with uh, the Polini brothers talking to Alfonso Dennard about, uh, hey, look, the only way Colorado is going to get back in this game is if we give up any more big touchdowns. So from now on, you stay on top of the route. You don't jump the slants. And uh, that's what he did on that last one and came up and made a nice play to knock it out. He's a guy who, uh, boy, he's awfully good. I know Amukamara gets all the credit and should. But as good as good a two two cornerbacks there are in the country. One more look at the touchdown. Let's go to New York now. John Saunders, you put a period on Auburn and Alabama for us, please. Well, they put a period on Greg McElroy, knocked him out of the game, so they had to go to back up A.J. McCarron, and he had four shots at it, did not complete a pass. Auburn holds on to beat Alabama 28-27 after trailing 21 to nothing. John, thanks so much. And let's take a look at today's good hands play brought to you by Old State. Well, it's been all about the running game for Nebraska, mostly. However, that was a halfback pass by, to Brandon Kenny, and Brandon Kenny again with a good double move. And then this one, another pass by Burkhead, and that was just a wonderful catch by Kyler Reed. So they've moved it up and down the field with the run game, but when they needed the score, they've gone to the passing game. Well, let's see. This time, Gunalic's going to have to kick it into the wind, and it's uh, going to get pushed down at around the seven-yard line. This is Jefferson. Jefferson picks up a block as he reverses his field and forced out of bounds at around the 30. Well, and for Colorado, of course, they're going into an offseason where they're changing conferences. And as uh, Mike Bone, the, off uh, the uh, athletic director, excuse me, said, uh, a good natural move for Colorado. Of course, they made that choice after knowing Nebraska was leaving the conference. But uh, the search is on. And I think Brian Cabral will get a long, steady look. Another name that's been mentioned for this job is uh, Air Force head coach Troy Calhoun, who's done an amazing job at Air Force. He really has. He knows that state. Eric Bieniemy, former great running back, who's now with the uh, Minnesota Vikings as a running backs coach. 
Bill McCartney, the ex-coach, who hasn't coached since 94, but he's in the mix. And, of course, some mention of LSU head coach Les Miles. Stewart takes it for a three-yard gain. Uh, Gomes with the tackle. Hey, Gomes has had himself a good game today. Uh, but you've got to stand in line if you play for that defense. But he has an interception and also a fumble recovery. The one that's going to bug him, though, is he didn't score on that interception. Or no, a fumble recovery. You can hear the reaction from the crowd. They know it is senior day. And uh, they wanted badly for him to take it into the end zone. Well, and, and the one problem area this defense had early in the year was tackling at safety. They brought in Austin Kennedy's played more, Courtney Osborne, but Dejan Gomes has kept himself on the field, kind of like Eric Haig, able to play a couple of different spots. Hawkins looking, got it complete, and that is uh, Luke Walters, senior out of Lakewood, Colorado. <laughs> The one thing the coaches said about Luke, they love to throw to him, tight end or no. He has great hands, and he catches everything you throw to him. And a, a good target, too, at 6'3", 240. Paul Richardson is the man to the bottom of the screen and now in motion. They hand it to him and they're going to reverse it again and go throw back. And they got a man out there and Stewart can't bring it down. Scotty McKnight on the throw. And a, and a lot of people probably scratching their head when I mentioned that Les Miles was a potential candidate. But Les Miles has had such a rough time down in LSU. And you know, those fans have been so hard on him. And he has a background, of course, he was on Bill McCartney's staff. So uh, not completely out of the realm, but I, I would think, at, at looking from the outside, that Eric Bieniemy uh, and uh, Troy Calhoun of Air Force, to me, those would be the top two candidates if I were Colorado. Hawkins sees single coverage, throws it, and you see the hats go down from the officials. That's because the receiver went out of bounds. Paul Richardson, the intended guy. And the reason I say that Eric Bieniemy would fit in. No Southern California, knows recruiting, and that's where their recruiting base is going to go. Uh, they're going to play more games, of course, there in the Pac-12 South with USC and UCLA on their schedule every year. So they'll, they'll be there. They'll be playing games there. They'll be playing games in Northern California. But I also think that Brian Cabral, with what he's done and his passion for this program, is going to get a long look as well. Defensive play, knocked down Amukamara. You know, I think a lot of people forget that uh, Prince Amukamara was kind of lost on the offensive side of the ball when Bo Pelini and his staff got here. And they immediately looked at him and said, wait a minute, this guy's a corner. And uh, he just has such a great feel. He, he, he Very little wasted movement, great body control, good burst, reads it the whole way. And they talk about him as being sneaky. He, has, he does a good job of disguising where he's lining up. And also, you saw there, just waiting. He's being very patient. Well, fumbled the snap, and now kick's going to still be OK. Uh, Nebraska has to run away from it, and it goes out of bounds at the 10. So Grossnickel comes away with a pretty good one. Take a timeout, 45-17. ESPN's College Football on ABC, brought to you by K Jewelers, the number one jewelry store in America. Every kiss begins with K. Nissan, proud partner of the Heisman Trophy. And Verizon, the signal is yours. Wield it to transmit anything you want. Verizon. Max McGee, Matt Geyer, and Jake Shipman are truly the unsung heroes of our crew. See, Max and uh, Matt are the truck drivers that take our TV facilities all over this country. And folks, I mean all over. And Jake is in charge of the portable electricity that powers all of it. The big battery truck, as uh, we call it. And those guys have driven combined over 60,000 miles this season to put us on the road. And Travius Robinson taking it forward. 60,000 miles, wow. And a lot of people don't realize that for instance, next week, we don't know what our assignment is because they usually make a six-day pick. So they'll cool their heels until they get, okay, you're going here, you're going there, and they just load up, take off. Don't you 
think for sure that it would be the Conference USA Championship with SMU <laughs> having won today. And Central and it, Florida. And Central Florida. Yeah. I mean, certainly someone would have compassion for Mr. Goodrich. That's going to be close to the first down. Out of bounds at the 19. You know, Ed, <clears throat> there have been times this year that, and it's been the times that we have done their football games. This Nebraska football team, when they couple, when they play, and I love the, the term, but I think harmony is right. They play in harmony, defense and offense together. Boy, they get really good, don't they? Yeah, and, and, and with Taylor Martinez, as I think likely out next week, you're going to see the same thing. And, of course, it was a tough week for Bo Pelini and his brother Carl, who had to make statements about their behavior. They were called out by the uh, staff of the university. And uh, we've been following Coach Pelini and that type of communication. You know, I worked with the officials this offseason. That's going to get you a longer way. And wait a minute. Is that actually a smile I saw there on the sideline? And we've been <laughs> watching me. He said, I do have to work on my behavior, and I commend him this entire game. He's really been in control of his emotions, and so has Carl Pelini. So we're going to take a timeout. 45-17, Huskers on top. So we are back in Dominican Sioux down on the sideline. You see those career, career numbers. They retired his number today on his jersey. And after this play, we're going to go down to Janine. She's got uh, one more story to tell about the big fellow who is now playing with the Detroit Lions in the National Football League. Travis Robinson continues to operate at tailback for the Huskers. And he's going to take it straight ahead, spinning out of the 30 to the 33. Janine, let's check in with you. You got more on Sue. Yeah, Ron, and, and, you know, we didn't get to it before, but I think it's worth mentioning that before Sue had even received his signing bonus, he donated $2.6 million here to the University of Nebraska. 600000 of it was for an engineering scholarship. The other $2 million is going into the athletics complex, most of that for the strength and conditioning center. They're going to make some improvements and some changes to the uh, facility. Well, that's good for him taking his money and putting it where he thinks it will do the most good as that run goes to the 40. So, your game plan today, Ed? Well, I, I kind of thought that the uh, Colorado Buffaloes would have to use Rodney Stewart as much as they could, and they have. And for Nebraska, I thought 50 was about the right number for them to run. Of course, now Dontravius Robinson has gotten into the act, but they're right at 50 rushing the 15 pass, and I think you're going to see the same thing next week in the Big 12 Championship game. This is Austin Jones, still another tailback who comes into the lineup. You know, it's, that's an interesting story on, on Sue. I know a, a surprise to us last year. Fridays are the days that when we're on the road. We go in and watch video for at least an hour and a half to two hours, and Sue came in the, uh, the room with us. We didn't know he was coming in, sat down, started visiting, and and uh, started talking about, you know, defense, his philosophies on everything. Really an engaging and a nice guy. Zach Lee has come into the ball game at tailback. So, Zach Lee in the ball game at quarterback. That is Austin Jones again. What a nice uh, round of applause for Zach Lee, a senior playing in his last game. Started 12 games last year, and you see that big uh, sleeve on his right elbow. It had, he hurt his hand against, he hit his hand against the helmet against Missouri, then did it again in practice the, uh, the following week. They thought it was broken, but he also had uh, surgery on that right elbow, so both of those have been bothering him. And, of course, with Taylor Martinez out, uh, Cody Green came in and managed the ball game very well. I think that's exactly what they were hoping Cody would do and put it himself well. There's Zach. Yep. Couldn't find this guy open to begin with and then throws it and that's Kyle Reed. Tonight at ESPN 7 o'clock Eastern it's going to be number one 
Oregon taking on Arizona. Then at 10-15, it's Kellen Moore and Boise State facing off against Nevada. It's two must-win games for BCS championship game hopefuls. College football primetime at ESPN tonight. And of course, Boise State getting bad news as well as TCU with the Auburn coming back as they have all year long in the second half to stay in the top two positions, the key positions in the BCS on Sunday. Got a good look at Cody Green accepting congratulations on the sideline, and he did do a very good job. The biggest thing he, he did is he took care of the football. Didn't turn it over. Yeah. yeah. And, I, you know, I think with Zach Lee, he has as healthy as he's been for the last four or five weeks. Uh, if Taylor Martinez is not able to go or not 100% next week, I would suspect that they're going to develop a game plan that includes some Zach Lee. Cody Green, a good, a good thrower, a good runner, but I think Zach Lee gives you a little bit more in the passing game uh, if you want to change some things up. Jones again, a tailback. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense number 41, five yard penalty. Remain second down. Well, th this is part of the thing that needs to be cleaned up a little bit. You know, I know a lot of the fans uh, of the Nebraska Cornhuskers were very upset at the 16 penalties, a school record last week against A&M. But most of those were these types of penalties. There was a couple of personal fouls, but a lot of procedure, a lot of motion, and just some pre-snap stuff that they really have to clean up. Cooper who was in motion and it's Robinson who will get the carry though and it's going to bring up a third down and about nine yards for the first down as the clock runs we're at six or five and a half minutes now left in this ball game. Well and I'm pretty sure I know what uh, Bo Pelini and his staff will be doing tomorrow night watching Bedlam and I think uh, I think that's going to be one of the great games of the college season. I cannot see that being a 10-7 game. I think you're going to see in the 40s, maybe 50s, with two offenses that are awfully fun to watch. Well, the defender made contact. Uzo De Ribe came across and made contact with the uh, Searles. Offside, number 96 in the defense, five-yard penalty. Remains third down. Well, and, and Brian Cabral, interim head coach, not sure if he'll get that interim tag taken off, but it has just been, as he told us, an honor and a privilege for him to be able to take the reins for how short of amount of time it may be at a place that he played and he's coached for 22 years and has just enjoyed every second of it and done a wonderful job. Third down. Need to take it to the 39-yard line. We've been talking about Terrell Smith all afternoon long as that pass is thrown low and incomplete. Smith for the Colorado Buffaloes, a career high 17 tackles. 11 of those are solo. Well, here comes Alex Henry, and I think the crowd wants him to try a field goal from here, which would be a Nebraska record, but wisely. It's in at the end of the wind also. <laughs> yeah, but wisely, they're going to punt this one away. <laughs> And they're going to punt it away. By the way, he did get a record. Uh, he has tied uh, Chris Brown's career scoring record of 388 points Limits in this ball game. Colorado takes over first and 10 from their own 14 yard line. 45 to 17, our score. 428 left when we come back. One more look at a classic from this time, 2001. Hawkins drills the ball, tip almost intercepted Amukamara. Well, and as both of these schools move on, of course, Colorado the Pac-12 and Nebraska the Big Ten, I think it's, you know, we're losing a very good rivalry in Colorado and Nebraska, but let's, you know, I think we all kind of forget some of the great rivalries that will still be in this conference. The Red River rivalry with Texas and Oklahoma. Bedlam with Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, and Texas A&M now, I think, 
getting back into the conversation. I think Mike Sherman and his staff have done a wonderful job. They've got plenty of talent. I think they're going to be around for a while and be a big deal in this conference for years to come. Hawkins to Scotty McKnight being pushed back, but they're going to give him forward progress. A gain of about four, and it's going to be third down for the Buffs. But what a turnaround for Texas A&M. You know, we saw them earlier in the year, and tough year for Gerard Johnson, but they switch out and go with Ryan Tannehill. And uh, it looks like they're going to fall just short of making it to the Big 12 championship game, but the, it looked like a lost season. And uh, Mike Sherman and his staff have really done an excellent job turning things around there. Hawkins on third down, drills it from just behind. McKnight couldn't hold on. Well, if you're wondering why Cody Hawkins is still in the game, remember for uh, Colorado, they lost their quarterback uh, earlier in the year, Tyler Hansen, to a ruptured spleen, and the only backup they have is a true freshman, Nick Hirschman. And uh, they do not want to burn that young man's redshirt. His family said they, if they had to, go for it. They, they, Eric Kiesel tried to talk him out of it, but that's why Hawkins will finish this thing out. There's the kick. Going to hit the ground, bounding away from the Nebraska return man. And now Marlowe will be hit and pushed back inside the 35. ABC's Winter Wipeout. It's the same show with snow and more spills, thrills, and lots of chills. Winter Wipeout premieres Thursday, January the 6th on ABC. Well, it will be warmer in Dallas, but they will be playing indoors at the Death Star of the Dallas Cowboys. Some place. Yeah, that's where we saw Arkansas and Texas A&M play. Yep. Unreal. Austin Jones comes back in the ball game at tailback for the Huskers. Sandersfeld comes up to make the tackle. Now just a matter of running that clock down. We're about to go under three minutes left to play. So the people here in Nebraska can, uh, if they have not already made their plans, for sure can make their arrangements to get down to Big D. Of course, last year's game came down to the last second. Both McCoy almost let the clock run out, but threw it away with one second left. Exactly gives the ball straight ahead. And such a huge weekend around college football as far as the BCS is considered, of course, Oregon and Arizona tomorrow night, and a wonderful comeback by Auburn. Early in that game, it looked like it might be a runaway for the homestanding Alabama. And a game that uh, very important for Boise State. Their last state, really, playing against a very good Nevada team. Don't forget Sunday night, 8.15 Eastern time on ESPN, uh, an updating of the BCS standings. Lee going to throw it, and did he hold on? Yes, Jake Long out of Elkhorn, Nebraska. Listen to the reaction of this crowd. He went up in between two defenders and brought it down. The red shirt freshman. When this ball felt to me like it was forced, there was coverage underneath, coverage over the top. Well. I think they may review that. It was a wonderful effort. Not so sure that that ball didn't hit the ground, but hey, they're going to get it off and well, it's going to stand. Looked like he got his hand underneath yeah. it there, Ed, actually. And Robinson, since they have uh, picked up the first down, now it uh, becomes elementary. They can. Well, this next week for Nebraska is all about the training room. You've already lost Niles, Paul. He may be back for the bowl game with a broken foot, but it's all about whether you can get Taylor Martinez healthy for that ball game. Zach Lee and Cody Green, if not, I think may share duty. I think that it's uh, good for Nebraska to be able to get Zach Lee a little bit of, of work here with the injuries to his right arm and hand. Swings the ball out. Robinson. Puts a hit down at Bull 
runs his way over the defender. Wow, that's impressive. But uh, if it is, in fact, Oklahoma State, what an amazing game Taylor Martinez had against them back in October. 435 total yards, five touchdowns, passing the first guy in the history of this great program to throw for over 300 and rush for over 100. And I'm sure uh, if it is the Cowboys, they'd be just as happy if that turf toe's not healthy the next week. They saw plenty of him back in October. First down straight ahead with the running play and this one. Now let's see when they whistle in the 30 second clock. Well, it has started and we got about what? Two seconds difference, three seconds difference. Crowd well, beginning to stand up and cheer. Those that uh, have not left because it's getting a little nippy this evening. Well, what a crowd, another sellout here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Just become commonplace, hasn't it? Go Big Red. The chant comes up. Nine seconds, down to eight. And both teams start moving toward the middle of the field. Bo Pelini and his Nebraska Cornhuskers will pick up the victory. And they will go to 10 and 2. As they're going to win this one over the Colorado Buffaloes. And I have a feeling that that conversation right there is a good luck to Brian. And I'm sure Bo has known him for a long time. He's been at Colorado for such a while. What a wonderful game for Rex Burkhead. Boy, two <laughs> touchdowns, throwing the ball over 100 yards, rushing and another and touchdown. And he scored a touchdown. That's right. Let's go down to Janine. And congratulations to Bo Pelini and the Nebraska Cornhuskers on wrapping up the Big 12 North title. Bo, you were without your star quarterback and your leading receiver today. What made the difference today in your offense and being able to be so proficient? Well, we, Cody played well. Our guys, our guys up front played well. Our backs ran hard. Our guys came out here with the purpose today and uh, shows the kind of character we have on this football team. And what's it say about some of your younger, more experienced guys that stepped up today? Brockmeyer, Marlowe, and, and Cody, of course, now 4-0 as a starter for you guys. You know, it's, it just gives, I, I said earlier in the week, you know, when somebody goes down, you know, Niles is a heck of a player. And uh, these guys got some opportunity, and they stepped up for us, and uh, proud of each one of them. We talked before the game. We talked about it was a short prep week. You guys had a lot of distractions coming off your game last Saturday. Were there any concerns by you on where your team's heads were at? Oh, no, there were no distractions. I mean, uh, media is going to do what they want to do. They're going to talk, and uh, our guys were focused. They knew what we had to do, and uh, they, they had, uh, they had to, there was no question in my mind of what our football team was going to do today. And I know tomorrow night I'm sure you'll be watching Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, and for selfish reasons, who would you like to see win that game? You know, it's two good football teams, and, uh, you know, they're both good. I know one thing, whoever we see in Dallas is going to be a heck of a challenge. They're both good football teams. They're both very well-coached football teams. Congratulations on a big win today, and we'll look forward to seeing you all in Dallas. Thank you. Appreciate it. So, Janine, thanks so much, and a congratulations to, uh, to Coach Pelini. They have won the North and will represent the North of the Big 12 Conference in the Big 12 Championship next Saturday down in Dallas. Once again, our final score is Nebraska 45 and Colorado 17. Stay tuned for the postgame report right after this.